Stephen read to us from the book of Matthew, um, chapter 18, when the disciples were not very happy that the children were coming to Jesus and that they thought, you know, the kids were just ancillary. They were just this side thing over here that um, Jesus didn't have his time to, to deal with them. He was dealing with more important things. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. You don't get it. You don't get it. These kids are so important. And verse 6 always, always strikes me. It makes me think when Jesus said, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. That's how important Jesus looked upon the children. And people always ask me, you know, oh, do, do, do you like teaching? That's a tough one sometimes because there, 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 there's times where, no, you don't like it. You don't enjoy it. And I always tell parents when they come in there, he's like, oh, I don't know how you deal with my child and this, that and whatever else. And I said, you know what? It's, it, it, it's really not the kids. It's the adults. We're the problem. We're the ones just like in, in, in Scripture when the, the disciples were the problem, not the kids. You know, Jesus wanted the kids to come to them. And so many times we look at the kids and we go, oh, well, they're, they're, they're just a problem. We don't want to deal with them. And societies have been doing that for centuries to children. We put little value on them. We push them off to the side. And we say, you know, you can be here, but, you know, be seen, don't be heard. But Jesus put a priority on the children in Matthew 18 that we read. He puts a priority on them, and, and we have to face it. In, in the modern-day church, there, there's either way too much priority on, on, on children or, or not enough because children can be noisy, right? Nobody agrees with me on that one? I mean, ch children are noisy, they require a lot of attention. They require a lot of work. They require a lot of energy and a lot of effort, special programs, all different things. But children are a blessing that God has given us. And so we, we see Matthew's account in Matthew 18. But if we flip over to the book of Mark, in Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 13, here's Mark's account. And it says, Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Now, one of the things that I, I, I've learned over the years and of take, taking the Bible class is that you've got to put this into context. And so we have to understand at the beginning of chapter 10, Jesus was just teaching about divorce and, 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 and what divorce is and, and, and how um, one is guilty of divorce and guilty of adultery. And I think it's crucial that we understand that when we're talking, we had the, the, the man-woman relationship here of marriage, and then all of a sudden here's the children, because children come out of that relationship. And so many times we see children are the ones who are, are the most damaged in that relationship when it falls, falls apart. And so it's, it's, it's important to understand that Jesus is telling us that the children, in this case, they're not a curse. They're not a problem that came out of this relationship. They're not something that you just have to endure and put up with, but they are a blessing that needs to be enjoyed. And that's what we're talking about today with these shoe boxes. So what's in the box, right? That, that, that's the title of the sermon. And, and, and David wrote this in Psalm 127. He said, behold, children are a heritage. They're a gift from the Lord. And we are definitely and certainly blessed here at Newburgh Chester with lots of little children. Loud ones, quiet ones, quick ones, sneaky ones, right? They're all there. We love them all. They're a blessing. And the shoe boxes that go around the world. There's kids all around the world who don't know the love of an adult. They don't know the love of Jesus Christ. And, and, and the shoe boxes that we're sending out here today, the, the, they show these young boys and girls all around the world that somewhere, someone is placing value on their life. Somewhere, someone loves them. 
and that Jesus Christ is real. And see, as we get ready to pray and prepare to send these boxes out into the world, we need to understand that our prayers, the work that Dorothy and everybody here put into these boxes, it's an extension of the hands of Jesus Christ. We are reaching out across, across the globe to all sorts of different people that we would never be able to reach before. So... What is in the box? Now, I was expecting Dorothy to open up the box like she used to. You, 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 you threw me a curve, Dorothy. And she would pull out different things that were in the box, right? Well, this box is empty. How would you like to open that one up, kids, on Christmas morning? Right? I mean, that, that, that's, no, that's no good. But there's something more than just tangible stuff inside this box. And the first thing that we see in this box is love. And not only love, but we see the immeasurable love of God in this box. Because when this child opens up this box, as Dorothy talked about the little booklet that they will all receive, that walks them through who Jesus Christ is, what he did for them, they will see the immeasurable love of God. And that in order for love to, to be real, it has to cost something. And they're going to see that people took the time and the effort to place that love into this box. And then they're going to read that booklet in their own language, and they're going to see that somebody by the name of Jesus went to the cross for them. And that that love he had for them was real because it cost him something. It was given to that child on the cross. Paul writes this in Ephesians 2. He says, but God, who is rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. See, that's what that child's going to see. He's going to see that love, the love that you have for that child and the love of Jesus Christ. Because in a lot of these countries that these boxes go to are countries where the, 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 the Christian Bible is outlawed, it's banned. And these children have absolutely no idea of what the love of God is or what it looks like. All they know is an abusive family, an abusive God, an unloving God, a God who is uninvolved in their lives where they are just simply pushed off to the side and they're just simply seen as a resource, something that can be used. 1 Peter 3.18, it says, Christ also suffered once for the sins the, for the just and the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive in the spirit. God died for all. He died for all of these children. So that child looks into that box and he sees the love, the tangible gifts of love. And then he sees the immeasurable love of God as well. See, we're called to go out and to send this message to the world. Jesus told his disciples, one of the last things he told them, he said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And we do that by sending out these boxes, showing the love. And it's going to touch children and it's going to touch families as well. We're going to see it touch the hearts and lives of the family members who never understood what a loving God is. They've never seen the, the actual tangible effects of the love of another person that they've never met. And see, that's what we're doing today. We're going out into the world with these boxes. They demonstrate the immeasurable love of God to millions of people around the world since 1983. I'm sorry, 93. Take that back. 1993, Samaritan's Purse has sent out over 198 million shoeboxes around the world. I want you to stop and think about that, how many that is. And there's more that needs to be sent. There's more people that need to know the immeasurable love of God. So they open it up and they see the love of God. And then they see that someone cares. A lot of these children have never had anybody who's cared for them they're just for a moment, they're going to open up that box and they're going to see shoes that they never had, socks, hair, hair barrettes, whatever it might be. Maybe it's a baseball or a basketball or, or, or whatever that child has so been longing for. And just for a moment, that child is going to look in that box and see love and he's going to see that somebody cares and he's going to forget or she's going to forget all about the hardships 
that they have in their life. They're going to forget about the hunger that they have in their belly. They're going to forget about all of the hopelessness and the despair that they're living in. Why? Because they open up a box and they see that someone actually cares about them. And they know that there is a God and to know that there is a God who cares. Philippians 4.19, Paul said, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in the glory by Christ Jesus. See, they see a tangible effect of God supplying for them what they need and what they want as well. And they see this love and they see that somebody cares. And see, we are again called to show that love to a world around us that is increasingly hostile to the word of God. And the sad part about it is, is we see that happening today in our own country as well. And we're sending out these boxes to around the world to show people the love of Jesus Christ. We've been studying the book of James. And James addresses this in James chapter 1. He says, pure and undeviled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. Well, can we physically conceivably go visit every one of these children? Can we go visit the orphans? Can we go visit all the widows? No, we can't. But when we pool all of our resources together, we can do that. Now, remember from our study of the book of James, this is more than just saying hi to somebody. This is more than making yourself known to somebody. The word visit, again, comes from that Greek word, episkopos. And that word re re uh, refers to an overseer, someone who looks out for someone. So to visit the needy, to visit the orphans and to take care of their needs is like a shepherd or a farmer who takes care of their flock. You take care of their needs. It means that we show up. We show up in their lives when it matters when they need us, when they need help. And it's a clear call to the church from the book of James here that we are to exercise compassion. We are to reach out to the needy, to get involved in the lives of hurting people, not only in our own backyard, but around the world. Because a truly, truly redeemed heart, a truly redeemed Christian will always reach out to those in need. John said this in 1 John uh, chapter 3. He said, whoever has is the world's goods and sees his brother in need, but shuts his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deeds and in truth. I don't know who first ever coined this phrase, but I remember John Epperson saying it all the time. He, this is one of his favorite phrases, um, preacher or pastor from Grinnell. He said, no one cares how much you know until, you, until they know how much you care. They don't care about all your Bible knowledge. They don't care how smart you are. They want to physically see that love. They want to know that you love. They want to know that you physically care for them. And Jesus said in John 13, he said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. For by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. They'll see that someone cares. They'll see that someone loves them when they open up this box. Now, for all my farmers here today, they're also going to open up that box. They're going to see love. They're going to see caring. And they're going to see some seeds in the box. And you think, why in the world would they see a seed in the box? Because this shoe box is planting a seed. It's planting the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the heart and the life of that child who receives the box. And what we need to understand, as every farmer knows, you can have a warehouse full of seed and it's not going to produce anything if you don't put it in the ground. You have to plant the seed before you, it can bear the fruit of the harvest. And so we send out these boxes with the seed of the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians because people were arguing about who does what. He said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants in anything nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, 
and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. See, we are called to do whatever it is that God wants us to do. If it's planting that seed, we go along and we just plant that seed, plant that seed, plant that seed. And God has somebody else in mind who's going to come along and water. And then he has somebody else in mind who's going to come along and, 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 and get, get ready for that harvest. And we sometimes forget that. It starts with the little seed. It starts with that little seed being planted in the hearts and the lives of these children. And see, so many of us, so many of us think that it's our job, it's our job, every Christian's job to make everybody be a Christian. To make everybody drink of the waters, drink of those living waters of Christianity. But in reality, it's our job by sharing the gospel of the love of Jesus Christ with each and every person. We, it's our job to make them thirsty for the water. That's what we're called to do. And we do that by planting that seed, Galatians 6, 9. It says, don't grow weary. Don't grow weary while doing good for in due season. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. See, sometimes we're going we're gonna to send things out. We're going to do things and we're going to go, oh, man, it, it, it was a total failure. But God has a plan. God has a plan. God has a purpose. And we are to show the love of Christ to a world and, and, and do these things. This is what we've been called to do. And the shoeboxes is how we're showing that love in this case. And the shoeboxes lead those children, they lead those families to the water, to the living waters of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because many people around the world, they don't even know it. They've never heard the name Jesus. They have no idea. They don't have any concept. And their hearts have been crying out that you are my God and early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. They're thirsting. They don't know what it is, but they're thirsting for something. Their flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. The shoeboxes are the seed and they make a difference. So we see that love. We see that somebody cares and we see that seed planted and that seed is going to, at some point, it's going to grow. It gets planted in the hearts and the lives of those children and those families and it's going to grow and then they open up this box and they see that this world is no longer their home. They see that this world is no longer all there is because now they see eternity. They see heaven. Just think, we don't know where our boxes are going. We don't know where they're going to end up. But just think, some little child in the Ukraine can open up this box And that child is going to go from a war-torn country full of bombs and bullets and warlords fighting to heaven filled with unspeakable peace and the Prince of Peace, Jesus himself, all from this shoebox. Or maybe it ends up in some small little um, African village somewhere and this child's going to go from walking down dusty, dirty roads, roads to strolling down streets of gold paved in heaven. Or maybe they live in a little grass hut somewhere and they go from row after row of grass huts or shanties and then the, now they're walking down those streets of gold where there's spacious, beautiful mansions made of precious stones as far as the eye can see, all from opening up a cardboard box. That's all it is. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, he said, For eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor have entered into the hearts of man the things which God prepared for those who love him. When all of a sudden they realize that God loves them. People care. God cares. That seed begins to grow. And they begin to see eternity in heaven with Him. See, heaven is a place where this child who opens his box will offer up the tributes of praise and glory for the glorious gift of God's love that has been placed into their box and into their hearts. That's what awaits the child who opens up this one shoebox. See, there's a lot of bad stuff going on in the world. There's a lot of bad stuff. 
But just for a moment, that child gets to open up that box and they get to see the happiness. They get to see the love. They see that someone cares. They see Jesus Christ himself. And they know that through him, there is eternity in heaven. And when in their, while they're in heaven, John wrote Revelation 21, 4, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye, for there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have all passed away. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing with these shoe boxes. These shoe boxes are more than just a little cardboard box filled with some trinkets and some clothes and some different things. They are an, e an eternal investment in the kingdom of God. That's what's in this box because we need to understand children are an e eternal investment in the kingdom of God. We're going to pray over all of these shoe boxes here. And when I'm done praying, I'm going to hand the mic over to Craig and he's going to give you directions on how we, we load them all up. And maybe you didn't participate or help pack a shoe box. That's okay. Your prayers, your help loading them. That, that, that's part of being that, that seed. You know, some plant, some water, some harvest, some cultivate, some got to pull weeds, right? Everybody has a spot to fill. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this much. As soon as Christmas is over this year, somebody by the name of Dorothy around here, she's going to start looking at sales and she's going to start buying. This is something that continues. This isn't a one shot deal where we are looking to do it just once a year. This is a year round project. This is where we are prayerfully and thoughtfully considering how lives can be changed by a little shoebox where they can see the immeasurable love of God, where they can see that someone cares, where they can see eternity in heaven with Christ because we packed a box for them. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of the children that you've blessed us with here in this church. And we know, Lord, that there's many people around the world who don't look at children the same way as we do. But Father, as we pack these shoe boxes and we prepare to load them up, Father, I pray that your anointing would be upon each and every one and that you, Father, would designate each and every box for that one specific child who needs to see the love, the immeasurable love of God. They need to see that someone cares. And I pray, Father, that, that seed of hope and of love would be planted into their heart, into their life, and that it would sprout forth a beautiful, bountiful harvest that would grow in their lives and spread to their family members and people around them. Father, and I thank you for all of the hands who helped prepare these boxes, to pack the boxes, to shop for them, to do all the things for, for the entire calendar year that they've been doing this, Lord. And I pray that you would continue to use Newburgh Chester, that you would use the men and women of this church to reach out to a community, to reach out across the globe, Lord, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, your word tells us that Jesus placed a special value on the hearts and the lives of the children. Father, I pray that we never forget the value of the children that we have here before us and the value of the forgotten ones around the world, even in our own backyard. So, Father, I pray today as we pack these boxes that your blessing, that your anointing would be upon each and every one. And I pray, Father, again, and I thank you, Father, for all of the workers who have worked to help this ministry be established and to grow. And I pray that you would continue, Lord, to use this ministry to reach out to the hearts and the lives of the children around the world. Father, let your blessing be upon these boxes. Let your word go forth and be planted in the hearts and the lives of the children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.